This is Marielle Lucille Smith, America's favorite therapeutic communicator, and I'm bringing daily Bible study to you today. It is been it has been a while, a couple of days, a few days, um, since I've actually done Bible study. I have um, sick family members that are ill and. I have been doing all I can to help and assist. I'm reading Jeremiah 25 11 today. I'd like for you to um, listen because this is a very strong message and um, seems like it wasn't um, it was it was meant to be it was meant to come out as strong as it is. Jeremiah 25, 11. Happiness in those places where there will be no more happy sounds of the brides and grooms. I will take away the sound of people grinding mill. I will take away the sound of the lamp. The whole area will be an empty desert. All these people will be slaves of the king of Babylon for 70 years. But when the 70 years have passed, I will punish the king of Babylon. I will punish the nation of Babylon. This message is from the Lord. I will punish the land of Babylonians for their sins. I will make the land of a desert, a desert forever. I said many bad things will happen to Babylon and all of them will happen. Jeremiah spoke about those foreign nations and all the warnings are written in this book. Yes, the people of Babylon will have to serve many nations and many great kings. I will give them the punishment they deserve for all the things they have done. The Lord the God of Israel said this to me, Jeremiah, take this cup of wine from my hand. It is the wine of my anger. I'm sending it to, I'm sending you to different nations. Make all the nations drink from this cup. They will drink this wine. Then they will vomit and act like crazy people. They will do this because of war that I will soon bring against them. So I took the cup of wine from the Lord's hand. I went to those nations and I made them drink from the cup. I poured this wine from the people of Jerusalem and Judah. I made the kings and leaders of Judah drink from the cup. I did this so that they would become an empty desert. I did this so that the place would be destroyed so badly that people would whistle and say curses about it. And it happened. Judah is like that now. I also made Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, drink from that cup. I made his officials his important leaders and all his people drink from it. I also made all the Arabs and all the kings of the land of Uz drink from that cup. I made all the kings of the land of Phil um, Philistines drink from that cup. There were the kings of the cities of Askelon and Gaza and Ekron and what remains of the city of Ashdod. Then I made the people of Edom, Moab and Ammon drink from that cup. I made all the kings of Tyre and Sidon drink from the cup. I also made all the kings of the faraway countries drink from that cup. I made the people of Dedan, Dedan and Timon, Tema, and Buzz drink from that cup. I made all those who cut their hair at their temple drink from the cup. I made all the kings of Araba drink from the cup. These kings live in the desert. I made all of the kings of Zimri. Elam and Media drink from the cup. 
I made all the kings of the north, those who were near and far, drink from the cup. I made them drink from one after other, one after other. I made the king, all the kingdoms that are on earth drink from that cup. Finally, after these other nations, the king of Babylon will drink from it too. Jeremiah said to those nations that this is what the Lord, all powerful, the God of the people of Israel says, drink this cup of my anger, drink from it and vomit, fall down and don't get up. Don't get up because I'm bringing wars against you. They will refuse to take the cup from your hand. They will refuse to drink it, but you will tell them this is what the Lord all powerful says. You will surely drink from the cup. I am already making these bad things happen to Jerusalem. The city that is called by my name. Maybe you people think that you will not be punished, but you are wrong. You will be punished. I am giving the command for, our, for war to come against all the people of the earth. This message is from the Lord. Jeremiah, you will give them this message. The Lord shouts from above. He shouts from the holy temple. He shouts against his people. He shouts are loud. His shouts are loud like songs of people walking on grapes to make wine. Hmm. The noise spreads and spreads to all the people on earth. What is all the noise about? The Lord tells why he is punishing all the nations. He has given his arguments against them. He has judged them and now he is killing the wicked with his sword. The message is from the Lord. This is what the Lord all powerful says. Disaster will soon spread on from country to country. They will come like a powerful storm to all the faraway places on earth. The dead bodies of those killed by the Lord will reach from one end of the earth to the other. No one will cry for them. No one will gather up the bodies or bury them. They will be left lying on the ground like dung shepherds. You should be leading the sheep. Start crying, you great leaders. Start crying, you great leaders. Roll around on the ground in pain, you leaders of the sheep. You leaders of the sheep, roll around on the ground in pain. You leaders of the sheep, it is now time for your slaughter. You will be scattered everywhere like pieces flying from a broken jar. There will be no place for the shepherds to hide. They will not escape. I hear the shepherds shouting. I hear the leaders of the sheep crying because the Lord is destroying their pastures. Those peaceful, peaceful pastures will be ruined because of the Lord's anger. He is like an angry lion that has left his cave because of his terrible anger. And by the attacks of the enemy army, their land will become an empty desert. This message came from the Lord during the first year of Jer Jerokim, son of Josiah. And the king of Judah, Judah, the Lord said, Jeremiah, stand in the temple yard of the Lord. Give this message to all the people of Judah who are coming to worship at the temple of the Lord. Now, in reading this, what this message screams to me is God don't like ugly and cares very little for pretty. So that's what this message screams to me. And it also speaks to being irresponsible with love. People um, receiving, receiving love and abusing their power, abusing, abusing um, their loved ones emotional abuse, taking advantage of others, emotional, um, kindness and sincerity. And this has been something that's been going on. You always see it. You see actually people making a lot of shows about it. Um, saying that, um, you know, you know, you see all these shows, literally lifetime is full of them, but, um, 
it's it's something that's been going on. People abusing their their uh, their significant other's love, their emotions, taking advantage of that love, that kindness, that weakness, that um that place of safety, that place of security, that place where you would say um you know, I'm I'm actually going to let you into my heart. I'm going to let you into my my secret place or into my um my private my privacy amongst my children, amongst my family members and people taking advantage of that. There's a lot of crimes of passion going on having um and and you'll see that in these communities people are um not able to handle rejection. They're having a hard time communicating. They're having a hard time being honest. They're having a hard time being honest with their loved ones. They're keeping secrets. They're being very secretive. They're damaging their relationships. It leads to separation and divorce more than any other time. I mean, what, where, where do we see um, this divorce actually not happening in masses? Where do we see separation not happening in masses? Where do we see these parents abandoning their children not happening? This separation and loved relationships not happening. This, this failed communication not happening. It is literally overflowing. And love and um, people being just irresponsible with love. God, God does not like ugly and cares very little for pretty. What does that mean? That means that at the end of the day, are you following God's will? Are you following his commandments? Are you respecting God's commands in his will? Or are you following your own? Are you being shallow? Are you taking responsibility for your children? Are you taking responsibility for someone's heart in your hands? Are you taking responsibility for someone and allowing you in their private area and their privacy? Are you taking advantage of it? Or are you using that, um, abusing that power? Oh, I, she let me in her home. Now I'm going to rob her of her jewelry. She opened her door for me. Now I'm going to rob her. Rape. Murder. You hear about it every day. We need to take away. The takeaway of this, um, one of these lessons is overcoming jealousy. To be forthright and honest in communication. We hear about these people abusing power in in high um, political um, in high political positions. We hear about people abusing power and and corrupt in high military ranks and high royal um, positions. Abuse of power. This has been going on a long time. I would I would see that, um, and you're supposed to be. in a position where you're receiving tons of love, tons of love and respect from the masses and you're abusing that power. These people will have problems with trouble with obeying their parents. They will have trouble with their teachers. They will have trouble with bosses and other authoritative fig authority figures. They don't play well with others. The takeaway with this is to stand up for the underdog, become the whistleblower who exposes the shady corporate practices. If you know somebody is doing something wrong or abusing their power or abusing someone that they love, taking advantage of someone that they love, an elderly person, their grandparent or their um, significant other, their wife, their husband, their children, any love relationship and it's being abused, any power relationship and it's being abused, you need to say something about it. 
If you don't, you will be continually tested over and over and the country after country will drink after drink in the same situation over and over again until we learn our lesson. And I think that's what this is speaking in reference to in Jeremiah 25, 11. Jeremiah on the nations of the world. God saying, you did not heed my warning. You did not heed my warning. So just like the Babylonians are going are punished, the happy sounds of the brides and the grooms will, will go away also. Everybody will be punished. He said, if my people are punished, you will be punished also and also for all of your wrongdoing. No one will go without punishment. No one will go without. The Lord says, tells why he is punishing the nations. He has given his arguments against them and he judged them. And now he is killing the wicked with his sword. This message is from the Lord. We have to heed what God is telling us to do and which is the right thing in respecting love, respecting other people's kindness, the intangible things, privacy. You see this all the time. People feel like, um, they can hurt you and get away with it. According to the Bible, no, you can't. Just because you're in a position of power does not give you the right. It says right here, shepherds who should be leading the sheep start crying. You great leaders roll around on the ground in pain. You leaders of the sheep. It is now time for your slaughter. You will be scattered everywhere like pieces flying from the broken jar. I think this is the time. I hear the leaders of the sheep crying because the Lord is destroying their pastures. This is the time for us as leaders to step up and lead by example and doing the right thing, ethics, morals. I want to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Please deliver us all from evil. From thine is the power and the glory forever and ever. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you, Jesus, for your salvation. Thank you for your warning. Thank you for your heeding for our ability to heed and um, our, our capacity to change, to turn from evil and stop manipulati ma manipulating people and others and our, our power to abuse, to abuse others, to abuse and take advantage of others in their privacy. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray for your forgiveness, Lord. We pray for your forgiveness, Lord. We ask that you come into our hearts, Lord. We ask that you come into our mind and our body and soul. We ask that you come and sit at our seats when we eat. We ask that you break bread with us, Lord. Like you did the tax collectors. We ask that you help us, Lord. Heal us, Lord. Guide us, God. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray for your guidance, Lord, and your forgiveness, Lord. Please forgive us for our sins. We love you so much, and we thank you so much for everything you blessed us with, Lord. We thank you, God, for healing, Lord, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and financially. Thank you for healing our land and the whole world, Lord. Thank you for healing our world, Lord. 
the earth itself in general, in all, in, in every way, shape, and form. We ask that you bless all of the leaders, Lord, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet and make them renewed. Make them anew, Lord. May they turn from evil and do right. May they stop abusing power if they are. May they do what is right by their people, by the ones that follow them and love them and voted them into those positions. May you do right by all those that are in loving relationships. May they also do right by them. May people honor their their communicate communicating honestly. May people honor their love and their emotions and communicate honestly and directly. May people not abuse their power and abuse others emotionally. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray that you just put a stop to it. This is nothing, Lord. This is nothing. You are everything. You are everything, God. And we thank you for everything, God. We are nothing. We are nothing. We need your help. We need your guidance. We need you to carry us through this. Please forgive us for our sins, Lord. Please heal our land, Lord. Please heal our leaders, Lord. Please heal us, God. Please stop all the punishment, Lord. May we all just turn over a new leaf and do right. Do right. Stand for what's right, what's ethically, morally right. Stand for God's commandments, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray that we have, a, we have the strength and we have the focus, Lord. And we have the teamwork and we have the support. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray that you just continue to watch over us mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, Lord. Bless my family, Lord, that are unhealthy, Lord. My mom and my niece, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for blessing us with health, Lord. Thank you for blessing us. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray, Lord. From the crown of our head to the sole of our feet, Lord, we ask that you... Yeah, you divinely intervene. We ask that you build up consciousness in those without conscience. We ask that you build up sympathy and empathy and compassion in those that do not have it. We ask that you build them up, Lord, because it's nothing for you to do it. We ask that you increase their learning ability, Lord. Remove the blockages in their brain. Remove the blockages in their feeling, in their emotions, in their spirit. Remove them, Lord. Engulf them in compassion, Lord. In understanding, Lord. In love. Let them feel what they have and put others to endure so it may stop. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray that we just receive your forgiveness so we are not all punished for others' wrongdoings. We are actually um, forgiven. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray and that we work together to make this world a better place and grow from our mistakes and do better if we, we grow from our mistakes and do right. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Thank you, God, for blessing us mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and financially. Amen. Thank you so much forever. And you have a great day.